Hey guys, welcome back to another something in about five minutes and today is an exciting day in that I am bringing you a brand new acronym that I even just learned and that is called Be Fast. So let's get started. All right, so this morning I was literally flipping through a brand new EMT book that I had just gotten my hands on. And I was flipping, you know, through to see, you know, new changes and different things that they put in those, you know, the new editions. And I came across the Cincinnati Stroke Scale next to the LA Stroke Scale. And then this brand new acronym, Be Fast, which is really cool because it lays out the signs and symptoms associated that you should be looking for in a stroke CVA type situation. So I wanted to like immediately break it down for you guys because like I said, I had never seen this before and uh, and I thought it was really good information. So starting out, we're going with B for balance, right? Balance or the inability or the difficulty in walking, okay? Um, I always learn this as the abnormal gait. We wanna make sure that people are walking straight and easy and they're not wobbling to one side or the other, or you know, there's no weakness in one side or the other. This is all about balance. Next, we're gonna talk all about the eyes, right? Is there a change or a loss of vision? All right, now these could be, you know, changes like someone changes colors, maybe, you know, their eyesight is normal and then all of a sudden they can't see anything but green. Uh, you know, the spots in their eyes, maybe they're seeing spots or flickers of light, uh, maybe their vision is doubled or maybe they're losing their vision. Maybe certain areas of the vision are, are blurry or, you know, uh, or black, or maybe they've not been able to see, uh, you know, in an entirety. So the other thing that we want to do when we're looking at the eyes is make sure of pupillary reaction, right? We want to make note of these things like equal round reactive pupils. We want to make sure that they're not blown, that they're not sluggish or dilated or fixed. We want to make sure that there's not a, you know, a gaze to one side or the other, up or down, left or right. And these all are going to be the things that we want to look for during our eye exam. Now we talk about facial droop, okay? Facial droop um, is symmetry of the face or asymmetry of the face is what we're looking for, right? A normal face like mine is looks equal on the left and the right sides. When someone's having a stroke, most of the time they lose facial weakness on one side or the other. So we ask typically if they can, you know, smile or show their teeth. Another great thing that you guys can do is utilize your smartphone. And what I do is I put it on selfie mode and I literally have the patient, if they're able to communicate to you, uh, you know, effectively enough to answer questions, hey, look at your own face, right? Is it normal? These people look in their, you know, look in the mirror and look at different, you know, aspects of their face every single day, multiple times a day. They are the experts. Maybe they have, you know, a little thing where that droop might be normal for them and it's not anything different. If they, if they or a family member can tell you, you know, that is, that's icing on the cake right there. And you know what would also be icing on the cake, guys? Hit that big thumbs up button for me. It really makes the videos uh, more popular and spread to more people to get this message out there. So if you're not the only one that uh, didn't know Be Fast, hit that thumbs up. Let's spread it to other people. All right, A for arm drift, right? Or what I used to call pronator drift. This was back when I took my EMT class. It was called pronator drift. We, you know, and, and this is testing the weakness and or paralysis of the left or right sides of the body. And we want that standard, you know, arms out, right? Arms out in front of them, palms to the sky, eyes closed. That's a big one eyes closed so they can't you know oh, i'm gonna keep it up because i'm looking at it no eyes closed they don't know which one's fallen or if they're keeping them equal and anytime that you see a little drift or a drop or something like that we are going to say that they have a positive uh weakness and or paralysis or semi paralysis or however it might be in that one side so it could be left it could be right it could be global as for speech right another thing that we always evaluate in our stroke patients is their speech normal all right are they slurring are they aphasic right so th there are three types of aphasia that we need to 
uh, you know, keep note of when we're evaluating their speech, right? The inability to find words. They're, they're looking like they know what they want to say and they just can't figure it out. So, you know, you ask them, hey, you know, uh, what road do, you know, do you live on? And they tell you an ice cream truck because they're really trying to find what one they say and they just spit out the wrong one. Or the inability to comprehend speech. They can't just understand what you are telling them. And then the inability to create speech. And this is where the slurring, the garbling, the junky, you know, uh, mixed words comes from along with uh, just the, you know, all inability to speak. They're just, you know, they can't speak and formulate words at all. Next and lastly is time. Okay, time is very specific in strokes, right? We want it down to the nanosecond if we can. We want to nail down exactly when those symptoms started, how long they've been going on, okay? Remember, time is brain, and the longer we allow these the the stroke to you know happen the more brain tissue is going to be damaged which leads to more and more prolonged uh debilities uh caused by that cba so guys that was be fast remember this is a great acronym to help you remember the signs and symptoms associated with a cba or a tia thanks for watching stay safe and i will see you guys next tuesday